Um, I'd like to thank Fernando for the invitation. Um, this is my first time in Princeton. And I hope this will not be my last time in Princeton. <laughs> Um, in my talk, I will show you how to generalize Clifford Torres. Okay. And a gray sphere. is the simplest minimal surface in S3. And the Clifford Torres. is the second simplest so as such it satisfies many uh, nice interesting properties one of them is it's a product surface it's a S1 of 1 over square root of 2 plus S1 of 1 over square root of 2. And it's helicoidal. I will give a definition later, but roughly speaking, uh, Clifford Torus is similar to the helicoid. And three, the equation is. The equation of Clifford Torres is this. So it's, it can be obtained by the separation of variables. So today I will show you there are many more minimal surfaces satisfying these, th these properties. Um, first product surface. Um, if sigma one is minimal in R M one as and sigma two is minimal in R M two and it's easy to show that sigma 1 cross sigma, sigma 2 is minimal in R m1 plus m2. And one cannot expect the same property to hold in S m1 and S m2. That this can't be true in, in the sphere. But with some scaling adjustment, uh, we can see that the same property holds in the sphere. So theorem one. This is a joint work with Hoppe. We proved that if sigma 1 is minimal in SM1, sigma n, n1 dimensional, and sigma 2 is minimal in SM2, then square root of n1 over n1 plus n2 sigma 1 cross square root of n2 over n1 plus n2 sigma 2 is minimal in s m1 plus n2 plus 1. So here we have these adjustments by scaling, and we have um, 
one dimension higher in the ambient states. So let's introduce coordinates. So V1 through Vn1 are local coordinates. M of sigma 1, N1. And we must say V N1 plus 1 to V N1 plus N2, local coordinates of sigma 2, N2. Then we have an immersion, F1. to sigma 1. Similarly, we have an immersion F2 sigma 2. So from these two immersions, we can construct a, a new immersion, F hat which is an immersion from D1 plus D2 onto this as follows. So this is obviously on this product surface, product space. Okay. So we can see that uh, these are local coordinates of this product space. And let's compute the metric in terms of those local coordinates. So Ps squared for the metric of the product space equals Here, G hat AB is in block matrix So little a and b run from 1 to n1 and similarly, A prime, B prime run from N1 to N2, from 1 to N2. So GAB is DP A DF1 DFA dotted with DF1 and DFB.
And let's let g hat be the determinant of g hat a b. Then this equals n1 to the n1, n2 to the n2 over n1 plus n2, n1 plus n2. times g g prime g is determinant of g a b and g prime is determinant of g a prime b prime and let's let La delta n1 be the laplacian on sigma 1 n1 and Delta N2, the plus N1 on sigma 2 N2, and delta N1 plus N2, the plus N1 on S2. Then we, we know that Laplacian of F, F1 component wise equals minus N1 F1 and Laplacian F2 equals minus N2 F2. And Laplacian F hat, we have to compute this using these identities equals 1 over square root of g hat This equals And we know that phi a and phi a prime are independent. So all the entries below this are zeros. And plus N1 plus N2 over N2, 1 over square root of G prime. And similarly, we have entries, zero entries here on top. And we have square root of g prime g a prime b prime b b phi b prime square root of and if you look at this carefully this quantity except for this factor this is exactly the Laplacian of F1, which equals minus N1 F1. Similarly, 
this, except for this, equals the Poisson of F2, which is equals minus N2 F2. So as a result, we have minus n1 plus n2 and this equals minus n1 plus n2 f hat therefore f, f, f hat is minimal minimal immersion so the product space is minimal. And um, we already know the special case of this theorem, which is SP is minimal, trivially minimal in SP. And SQ is trivially minimal in SQ. So by this theorem, their product with some scaling like square root of p over p plus q, square root of q of p plus q is q. It's minimal. It's minimal. In s p plus q plus 1. So this theorem is kind of a generalization of this simplest case. Second property, helicoidal. <coughs> uh, let me draw a picture of the helicoid. And this helicoid is a ruled surface, so there are many horizontal lines like this. And in a standard undergraduate textbook on differential geometry, there's a standard way of proving the minimality of helicoid. But there's an easy way of uh, showing mi minimality in this way. Choose any horizontal line, L. And consider rotation about this line by 180 degrees. Then rotation map flips helicoid. So helicoid sigma is mapped by rotation onto sigma but its, its orientation is reversed. So using this orientation reversing property, we can show that the mean curvature vanishes along this line L. But, can, but we can choose any such horizontal line. So this vanishes everywhere. And this proof has a nice application in, in more general case. So I'm going to use this um, definition. So let me introduce 
the definition of helicoidal. So sigma is an embedded hypersurface. And M. And let's assume that sigma divides M into D1 and D2. And suppose that at any point P of sigma there exists an isometry P of M such that phi, fi, phi fixes P and phi maps sigma onto itself, but it flips sigma in the sense that phi maps D1 onto D2 and phi maps D2 onto D1. Then you say that sigma is helicoidal in M. Examples of helicoidal submanifolds. Helicoid is uh, obviously helicoidal. And the Clifford torus also helicoidal. Right? Not only that, but higher dimensional helicoid, higher dimensional Clifford torus. is also helicoidal. And we have the following proposition. That every helicoidal hypersurface is minimal. In the ambient space. Uh, we can easily prove this proposition. If sigma is hi hypersurface in M and if is sigma is helicoidal, then let H be the mean curvature vector. Of sigma. Then the mean curvature vector of the image on the phi of sigma equals phi star of h vector h. Then that's equal to the sum of phi of phi star of e ei phi star of EI projected onto its normal space, which is equal to by this assumption, we know that this summation is equal to phi of uh, EI and EI onto the normal space, and that this is equal to the mean curvature vector. But the map phi flips over. So a vector h should, should be mapped to the opposite, minus h, which is equal to h. So therefore, h vanishes everywhere.
Okay. Um, as I said, the cliff of torus is helicoidal. But there's another way of viewing it as helicoidal. Introduce rotation by 45 degrees. Then this equation becomes x1, x2 equals x3, x4. Which is e equal to equivalent to determinant of x1, x2, x3, x4 equals zero. Okay. Similarly, um, s what, s2 of one over square root of two plus s2 of one over square root of two. This satisfies the, this equation. Again, if you introduce rotation map, then this is equivalent to determinant of 0, x1, x2, x3, 0, x4, x5, 0, 0, x6, and minus. So equal to 0. Okay. So determinant is somehow related with the helicoidal property, as the following theorems uh, implies. So theorem by Kachev. 19, in 2000, he proved that x11, x, x12, xnn in Rn squared, where xij, the matrix xj, is an n by n real matrix. with zero determinant. This set is a minimal hypersurface. Actually, this equation is homogeneous, so minimal hypercone in Rn squared. And recently, Hoppe, Linadopoulos, and Torgut proved the skew symmetric matrix version of this. So if xij is skew symmetric, with zero determinant, then this set is also uh, minimal hypersurface. But since it is skew symmetry, we have to restrict our attention as follows. Um, so mi minimal, this is a minimal hypercone. And R two n squared minus n. And both theorems were proved analytically. They, the authors uh, computed 
Laplacian and show that Laplacian vanishes identically. So their proof is uh, analytic proof, but I'm, I'm going to give a um, new proof, algebraic proof, using the helicoidal property. Okay. So um, algebraic proof of theorem 1. This is also with OK, sigma, um, so n by n matrices from a space mn, which is almost same as rn squared, Euclidean space. Okay. So the space of all the matrices in mn with zero determinant is a hyper hypersurface in a sense. So it's a um, algebraic sub variety, sub variety with, with dimension of n squared minus one in this space. Okay. So let's consider determinant to Divide n squared. So sigma divides the Euclidean space into d1 and d2. And d1 is the domain where determinant is positive. And d2 is the domain with negative determinant. Okay. And in this space, we have an inner product. which is the trace of x transpose y. And let's define, given an orthogonal, orthogonal matrix A, let's define the map phi A to be A times x. Then it's, it's not easy, it's easy to show that phi A is an isometry. And clearly, phi A maps zero determinant set onto zero determinant set. OK. And then choose any matrix with zero determinant in sigma. Then rank of x is less than n. So there exists an n minus one dimensional hyperplane. Hyperplane. Um, in Rn, which contain all the column vectors, all the columns of X. So we can consider hyperplane P. The reflection across P. So then there is a isometry corresponding to this reflection and the orthogonal matrix. So under this isometry reflection map phi A, this is equal to x. And this orthogonal matrix is in not in special orthogonal group. So phi A flips over, flips d2 onto d1 and d1 onto d2. So for Four assumptions are satisfied, so helicoidal. Therefore, this space is minimal in the Euclidean space.
What about the schismetric matrices? Um, algebraic proof of theorem 3. OK, so A is a 2n by 2n schismetric matrix. Unfortunately, the determinant of schismetric matrix is non negative. I raised it already, but we cannot um, define D1 and D2 because determinant is, cannot be negative. So in this case of schismetric matrix, we have to approach a little differently. So let's use Fafian. Fortunately, we have Fafian, which is Fafian squared e equals the determinant. So instead of determinant, we're going to use uh, the Fafian of A. And if A is a schismetric matrix Aij, then we can consider two vector and e1 through e2n are standard orthonormal vectors on r2n then 1 over n factorial omega to the n equals some scalar which is defined to be the fafian times E1 which E2n. So with this definition of Fafian, we can define D plus and D, D minus. So Fafian, a D plus is the set of all matrices with positive Fafian. And D minus is negative Fafian. And here, um, we define isometry differently from phi A up there. So we define psi A to be uh, the matrix, which is equal to A transpose x times A. Then uh, it's not that complicated to show that psi A is an isometry. And also, every schismetric matrix is diagonalizable. So for any x in N, there exists an orth orthogonal matrix such that Qt xq equals 0 lambda 1 minus lambda 1, 0. 0 lam lambda k minus lambda k, 0. And 0 lambda k plus 1 and minus lambda k plus 1, 0. Right. But if you assume that x is in, this in sigma, zero determinant set, then we, we sh know that the last entries are zeros. And here, lambda i's are all real, positive reals. And to, to introduce this uh, isometry psi a, we need to use the following matrix, which is almost identity matrix. Inst instead of identity matrix here, we have this matrix. And let's define the matrix B to be Q 
QJ Q transpose for this choice of Q, which arose from specific uh, zero determinant matrix X. Then psi B is not an easy computation, but you can show that psi B fixes the zero determinant matrix. And this is an orth still orthogonal matrix, but not in special orthogonal matrix. So psi B maps sigma onto sigma, but it, it flips sigma. So D1 onto D2, and D2 onto D1. So therefore, we can conclude that sigma is helicoidal in N. And N as I said earlier, this is a N is a two N squared minus N dimension. So, um, so N consists of all matrices of this form. And X to N squared minus N. So just consider these entries for this dimension. So sigma is helicoidal in N. So sigma is a minimal hypersurface in N. And we can co consider this map. map. Map from N to R to N squared minus N, which is defined Phi of this x, phi of this x is mapped onto just a vector times square root of 2. Then mu is an isometry between these two spaces. So sigma is actually congruent to a minimal hypersurface in this Euclidean space. Minimal hypercone. So these are uh, algebraic proofs of these two theorems. And let me Let me start the last part, the third part of this talk, um, separation of variables. Um, shock found these equations for his surfaces. This is the equation for his first shock's, sorry, yeah, for shock's first surface, yeah. And he found this by 
using this method of separation of variables. So all the variables, x, y, and z, are separable here. And he found another minimal surface called Shirk's second surface, which is And if you take log, the variables are separated here also. And not only these two surfaces, but Schwarz surfaces also can be obtained by this method. So Schwarz P surface and V surfaces can be obtained by this method. And also, the this equation for the two-dimensional catenoid uh, has separable variables. So basically, all <coughs> these are the all the non-trivial minimal surfaces which, which can be found by applying the method method of separation of variables. And we are considering Clifford torus here. So we have equation for the Clifford torus x, x1 squared plus x2 squared equals x3 squared plus x4 squared, or x1, x2 minus x3 x equals x3, x4. And this equation for the Clifford torus in four variables um, have separable variables, x1 and x4. And if you take log here, these variables are also separable. So the question arises, can you, can you find all, more minimal hypersurfaces in R4 with this method of separation of variables, especially in four dimension? So uh, I want to consider construct a new example in dimension four. So let's consider an implicit function. Given an implicit function of four variables, and I want to consider the minimality of this set, zero set. And the minimality of this set is equivalent to solving the following equation. So once you have a solution u for this, then this zero set is minimal, a minimal hypersurface. So I want to find the zero set of a specific, specific implicit function u, which is of this form, f1 of x1 plus f2 of x2 plus f3 of x3 plus f4 of x4. For this specific implicit function, the minimality condition becomes the fol following equation. For i different from j, fi squared, fi prime squared times fj double prime equals 0. So we have a, a nonlinear system of second order ODEs.
And to solve that, define Hi to be e to the 2 Fi. Then Hi prime squared becomes 4 Hi times Hi squared minus 1 for i equal to 1 and 2 and minus for i equal to 3 and 4. And we can see that Hi equals the vice stress P function for i equals 1 and 2, and Hi equals 1 over vice stress P function for i equal to 3 and 4. To si so to simplify it, let's um, introduce the following function s. Then s satisfies the following ODE. s prime squared equals 1 minus s to the fourth. And to solve this ODE, let's use this initial condition. Then the solution is a well-known function, which is Lemnitz Kadic sine function. In other words, it's a function related with the Lemnitz Kate. Lemnitz Kate is the set of all points from which the th product of two distances e equals constant. So if x is the arc length from the origin on the Lemnitz gate, then s of x is the distance from the origin. So this s is, a, is the Lemnitz gate fun sine function, which equals h1 and h2 this way, and h equals um, fi that way. So we can solve f1 plus f2 plus f3 plus f4 as log of s1, s of x1 times s of x2 over s of x3, s of x4 equal to 0. So this is the desired implicit function for the minimal hypersurface in R4. So we have the following theorem. The zero set for u bar, which is s of x1 times s of x2 minus s of x3 times s of x4 equals 0. This zero set is an embedded quadruple periodic minimal hypersurface. The period of this sine function, Lemnitz gate sine function, is the arc length of the Lemnitz gate. So period equals four pi, four times integral from zero to one, 
of this elliptic integral. Um, unfortunately, this hypersurface has singularities, periodic singularities. And that singularity can be found by expanding this lemniscatic sine function in Taylor series as follows. So at the singular point, the, the, for example, the origin. At the origin, we can ignore these terms. So at the origin, we have equality, Sx equals x. So at the origin, the minimal hypersurface has tangent cone, which is exactly, which has the equation x1 times x2 equals x3 times x4 the Clifford torus, the cone over the Clifford torus. So this embedded quadruple periodic minimal hypersurface has singularities, which is exactly the same as the cone over the Clifford torus. Okay. And this process of solving the ODE is very complicated. And uh, in the process, we can obtain more examples, but not as, as complicated as this, but we have the following examples. The obvious example is hyperplane. And the Second less obvious example is the, the Clifford torus. The third one is the minimal the minimal catenoid in four dimension space. And the the last one, the fourth one is this um, S1, S of X1, S of X2 equals S of X3 and S of S, S of X4. Okay, so these are all the uh, minimal hypersurfaces that can be obtained by the method of separation of variables. Then how about in higher dimension, in dimension five and higher? In this higher dimensional space, we are almost sure that the older minimal hypersurfaces obtained from the method of separation of variables are basically like this. So they are either hyperplanes or quadratic minimal cones, quadratic equation like this, or higher dimensional catenoid, or a cylinder over this, or a cylinder over the Shock surfaces or Schwarz surfaces. Okay, that's all. I stop here. <laughs>